you are currently watching the Headbangers Ball. I'm Ricky Rackman, and this is Ian Asbury and Billy Duffy of the Cult. Welcome to the Headbangers Ball. Thank, Thank you, Ricky. Surprising so, that you first guys time. have never been on the show yes. before. Well, you finally got a new album out, and it was since 1989 that you had your last record, Sonic Temple, which did, like, really, really well, right? Yes, wonderfully well, especially and in the United States. Thank you. Yeah. Did it do better in America than it did other places? Yes, because America's bigger. And they, they, they like rock and roll in America. They do. And um, They invented it, and they like it. There you go. And uh, was the new album, like, did, were you kind of felt like, oh, we've got to do as good as the last one or better than the last one? I mean, and, no. and especially with the delay. This album was called Do What We Want to Do. The last album, I think, was a lot of pressure on us to uh, come up with a really successful big album, because all our mates were having big albums like Duns and Metallica and stuff, and they, they were all selling billions of records, and we're sort of, like, sitting in the back going, help, you know? Mm -hmm. But, um... At the end of the day, we came up with a big album. Sonic Temple did really well for us, but we decided that we wanted to do something a little bit, a little bit more earthy, a bit more organic, a bit more drier sounding. Work on the rhythms. That was one aspect of it. Another aspect of it was the fact we lost two band members. <laughs> now, and speaking of, you've got new guys. In we the didn't band lose now. them. They actually ran away. Yeah, they ran away. <laughs> now tell us about the new guys in the band. They're not so mercenary for cash. Let's put it that way. <laughs> uh, the new guys. Well. Um, uh, one's called Kimley Wolf, and he's a bass player, and the drummer's called Michael Lee. And these guys... One's American. The bass player's America, Kimley, and, and he, he was in a, English. He's in an American band. What band was he in? Uh, Grand Front Railroad, I think. That's right. And Lord Tracy. And the album was in the Sex Pistols. Yeah, Algae. Algae. Algae and Box. He played the synthesizer in the Sex Pistols, right? Yes. Well, I want to talk a little bit about the uh, the new, like, American Indian stuff that we're going to be playing. But well, let's play the video right now, and then we'll come back and talk about it. This is the new video from the cult. Do you want to introduce it? Which one is it? Oh, we've only the got new one. one. <laughs> it's that one. This is our it's video. It's one. called Wild Hearted Son on Headbangers Ball with Ricky Rackman into the year 2000 with Heavy Metal. <laughs> <laughs> that was the cult with Wild Hearted Son. And Ian and Billy from the cult are here on the Headbangers Ball with us as we speak. And we just saw the video. And the starting of the video, you have uh, an American Indian in it, yeah. right? American Indian fancy dancer. Is that what it's called? Yeah, well, this is a certain style of uh, dancing. It's like a temporary form of what they used to do in the old days. Now, it's called fancy dancing. You really seem to be getting into, like, I guess, a lot of the American Indian stuff. I Images. Know yeah, I mean, that's something that I've been into for, like, since I was about 12 years old. Mm -hmm. I immigrated to Canada when I was a kid and was exposed to American Indian culture then. And, uh, like most teenagers, asking questions like, what's it all about? Who am I? Where am I going? You know, found that teachers and policemen and priests couldn't answer those questions for me. And being exposed to this different culture, I just became really fascinated with the religious beliefs and spirituality and had a lot of answers there for me. Now, in the starting of that song that we just played, is that like some sort of an Indian chant or something that's played it's, the starting of it? What it is is a grass dance. It's a um, traditional um, song. It's just called a grass dance. It's basically a celebratory song. And it's performed by the American Indian Dance Theater. Which you also had play yeah. or perform at the uh, Gathering of the Tribes, which you set up, that's right? That's right. Gathering of the Tribes was the first festival, folks. And... Um, American Indian Dance Theatre performed that first ever American Indian representation at a major cultural event in the United States. Kind of weird, considering I'm from England. I right. Get involved <laughs> right. You don't it, hear most people you know, talking about the great American Indian roots with an English accent. No, you don't. But I can talk like that for you, Ricky, baby. You do a little. Uh, no, Indian. man, thank you. You do a lot of a. Uh, you do the grass dance for us as we about to play the next video. <laughs> we'll do the hula dance. <laughs> <laughs> it's very sacrilegious. So well, here's a. Uh, we'll be back talking to these guys in a little bit. But right now, it's a debut from Alice Cooper. And Alice actually has a part in the new Freddy movie, so look for him in that. Here is a new uh, video and it's debut from Alice. It's called Love's Loaded Gun. We're back with Ian and Billy from The Cult, and this is, of course, The Headbangers. But I'd like to ask uh, a little bit about some of the songs that are on the new album. Song, the two songs that stand out that I like the most were uh, Earth Mofo. What does that mean, viewers? See, you can figure that out. Is there something you can <clears throat> tell us about that song? Mofo. It's just a heavy metal song. <laughs> and Bangkok Rain. <laughs> Bangkok Rain. Um, Bangkok Rain was a song I wrote, strangely enough, for Matt and Billy. Um, they went on a trip to Thailand and uh, told me about their experiences there, and I just kind of wrote the lyric around that. But of course, Billy being a headbanger, he put in the heavy crunch guitar. and it, it does two, have the heavy the crunch guitar in that song. It's very heavy. That's right? why I mentioned those two songs, the crunch heavy. guitar. Yes, very heavy. Now, do both of you have, you know, different musical influences? I mean, is Billy more into the heavier stuff? Because I know that you kind of have a lot of the later 60s influences. And the early 70s. And the early 70s. 
I like a lot of contemporary music as well. Uh huh. Yes. But do you, would you say that your influences are kind of varied, and that's why you get different styles in the, in the um, stronger, music? Stronger. I think stronger from innovative stuff. You know, like when it was all when it all first was created, the music. You know, stuff from like the Stones, the Doors, the Led Zeppelin, the Cream, blah blah blah. All okay. that stuff. Blah blah blah. The Free. MC5. Okay, we'll be talking more with Ian and Billy as the Headbangers Ball continues. Also, we've got debuts from Adam Seed, Nirvana, and Godflesh. So stick around. Godfish. We'll be right back. <laughs> We're back with Ian and Billy from The Cult. Now, I know that both of you guys have been living in L.A. for a while, haven't you? Does that make any so, difference? No, between here and London. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. which, which do you call home, though, London? <coughs> Wherever the suitcase is. <laughs> Wherever the suitcase yeah. is. Now, do you yeah. find that living in the L.A. area where so many bands have, like, started, <coughs> that that uh, does anything to influence your music at all? Makes us run out and buy bigger cans of hairspray. Really? Yes. Th that's what it does. Okay, now, you guys have been, the two of you in the band... I wanted to say something, really. Oh, I'm sorry, Billy. No, go right I had ahead. a thought there, but... No, no, no go on, it's about time you said something, really. Go on. I, I didn't want to speak today, say though, you know. Thing, I thought it was going to be mysterious. Okay, hey, we'll you, direct this you know. next question to you. The both of you have been in the band for a long time through different changes from Southern Death Cult to Death Cult to the Cult. And um, why do you think that you guys still attract an alternative crowd? and a rock and roll crowd. I mean, which would you say you are? A rock and roll band, a metal band, or an alternative rock and roll band? Silly. Oh, well, I get the most complicated <laughs> question, don't I, Rick? <laughs> you know right. what I mean? Uh, you were saving this I one would for say, you. Well, this is difficult, because I'm on Headbangers Ball, so I'm a little bit on the spot, right? I think, with the call, I don't know. It's a bit of a mix. We've always said when we started that we, we considered ourselves a rock band, full stop. And I think it's a very broad term. I don't like to pigeonhole what the cult do into any particular kind of thing, so... Rock, rock will do me. But if you're on 120 minutes, you would say... We love Morrissey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We would say... Okay, we'll be back talking to these guys in a little bit. Right now, it's time for tonight's Ball Buster competition. Here's a look at what happened last week with the battle. Armored Saints' last train home lost to My Religion from McQueen Street. Tonight, the Ball Buster champion, McQueen Street, is challenged by the Bullet Boys with Talk to Your Daughter. And if you're a Bullet Boys fan... Uh, I'll be at Cat House, Arizona, October 15th with the Bullet Boys. Just thought I'd throw that plug out there. Right now, what you do is you watch both videos, and you call up and vote for your favorite. The number to call is 1-900-370-0100. Each call costs only 50 cents. Here is the current Ball Buster champion, McQueen Street with My Religion. Welcome back to the Headbangers Ball. Ian and Billy from the cult are... They're still here. Do you want to say something, Billy? Um... I up. think I just said something. <laughs> I just don't want to cut you well, off No, again. did I say something? I thought I was like, you know, really <coughs> going ahead there. You know. um, I, I just wanted to make sure that I didn't cut you off. That if I there's something you wanted to time. say. Oh, I want to say hi to Nikki. I there you go. There you go. There you go. Okay. Um, on this record, I noticed that you co-produced this one. Yes. And you worked with Richie Zito. You've worked with different producers for... Every album, records. basically. Every album is a different I'm producer. I'm speaking again, Ricky. Pardon me? I'm speaking again, you know. <laughs> okay. Okay. Tell us about it, Billy. Okay, Ricky. Um... Why? I don't, we tried using the same producer, um, we did, an album we did called Love, we used a guy called Steve Brown and we tried to do the electric album with him and we recorded the whole thing and mixed it and then realised we didn't like it. So since that we've been a little bit gun shy of, it, circumstances have just led us to use different guys but way back, you know, when you make that kind of major blunder, you know what I mean, going in with the wrong guy, it was like, it was a lesson sort of hard, learnt the hard way. So. Now, Electric was one you did with Rick Rubin, right? Yeah, that yes. was the same album as we tried to do with this guy Steve Brown in England, and we kind of made a bit of a mess of it, so... Um, had a few too many cocktails, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We were a little unprepared, yes. I think we hadn't quite written the songs at the time, so that was a bit of a drawback. Because it sounded to me, starting with that record, that you guys really started getting kind of some ACDC riffs and some real good rock and okay. roll stuff. It's very complicated. Mm -hmm. Whole Heavy story. metal is very complicated. The whole story. It, went, it was more, we, we felt at the time, then, way back in that dark age, that we were getting a little bit pigeonholed as purely an alternative band. So, meeting Rick, he can't, Rick Rubin, had, is, is, as you probably know, is a very direct person. He has a very one track mind, and he saw the cult as a certain kind of band, and he brought out a certain element in the band that we were, nobody in England seemed to want to know about. I mean, 
1985 and 86, everybody wanted to be kind of a Thompson twin in England. There was no rock and roll really coming out of Britain. I mean, there's still not a great deal, to be honest. So that's basically what went down. You know, it was just it's something that's always been there, and Rick just focused in on it for us. Okay, we'll talk about a little bit more about that when we come back. But right now, it's Frantic Fringe time. And included in the Frantic Fringe is the first video from Adam Seed's debut album, Get In Line, plus a debut from Godflesh called Slave State. And uh, Godflesh is going to be touring next year with a band called Ministry that I'm a big fan of. Yes. Right now is the debut from Nirvana that a lot of people are really talking about. You guys heard Nirvana? Nirvana? Of course, got the record. There you go. And their Love brand it. new album is called Nevermind. It's got and the baby's here video is on the front. Sorry. <laughs> Swimming Naked. Yes. And here is uh, Smells Like Teen Spirit. Thank <laughs> you. 